Who that, everybody? We are back. I I'm happy. I'm happy to be back. I'm feeling a little bit better. Elias is feeling a little bit better. And after a almost very long hiatus, it's been a week. It's been a long week. We're back to talk some football. Yeah, it's been pretty. Man, it's been, I don't know. The, the hospital seemed to want us somewhere near or for some reason. I don't know. But um, otherwise, yeah, back to football. Back to Saints news, back to back, and kind of like you know, Deuce and I kind of like Meek and Drake, you know, back to back. Okay, that that works. Who that to everybody out that there? That works. Yeah, I mean it, it You're does. You're Drake, by the way. You're Drake, by the way. I'm Drake. Oh man, why you gotta do me like that? <laughs> Nobody want to be Drake. You know what? Fine, I'll be the rich one. Cool. <laughs> I'll just live with that. That'll be my burden to bear, my cross. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Get some who that's out, man. Yeah, let, let, let's get some who that's out there to everybody out in who that nation. I missed y'all. It's good to see y'all. Good to hear from y'all. Make sure you share this out with your friends, your families, your neighbors, your baby mamas, and your sisters because we need more women on the channel because they are smarter than y'all and prettier. Rusty Shanded 50, Donald with the pink buble, Kentrell playing online, Dave, Rusty, Earthworm Jacks, Jerry, Louie, oh man, Michael Sachs, Angel, B Will, Derek. Wesley, Travis, Twigger, Gerald, everybody out there, who that to you, Miss Tess, Joseph, uh, Twitch, all y'all, who that, God bless. Smash that like button as you come in. It's good to see you. Good yeah, to see so, you. So. Yeah, we got a, we got a, quite a bit to kind of talk about, man. We got the Saints, the, the logos for the draft hacks. Um, oh, my we, goodness. We kinda, those are pretty. Yeah, Russell Wilson is demanding contract leverage with the Seahawks and how that's demanding. a move that – possibly could affect the Saints next year. They have some outcomes. The Saints are number one on ESPN's power rankings currently um, following at this point of free agency. I mean, we'll also talk about some options after missing out on Robert Quinn. Uh, some familiar names that, that might ring bells that we'll discuss a little bit later. But, yo, how did you feel about the logos, man? How did, how did you – that hat is, is – oh, that hat is counterfeit. Hello, man. <laughs> that hat. That hat. It's been said on Twitter. We're going to repeat it several different ways. That's a gas station hat. But I don't even like to call it a gas station hat. Because here's the truth of it. And if y'all never lived in this neighborhood, you won't understand. But every neighborhood has got that corner. It's a vacant lot. And some dude pulls up in an old Yukon XL or Suburban with the, the same busted rims from the beginning or a van. And it pulls out all the fake Jordans and all the fake hats. And you can tell they fake because the Jordan has got like legs broken apart like this. And the hats are all the little icons are crooked. Looks like they've been monogramming up in a dark attic. That's exactly what this hat looks like. It has been monogrammed in a dark attic. It is completely boo-boo garbage. I realize they're going for the whole flag in New Orleans. This is last second. This is when you turn in the project the morning of. You did it that morning. It was horrible. First of all, horrible. first of all, first of all. I've done that before, and on a project that was a 25 was the top score. I got a 23 out of 25. So don't even group that. Well, then maybe I'm they should which, hire you I'm to curious. do this. I'm curious which intern got that last second. Like, somebody checked the email uh, midway through the day and was like, hey, you know, we need the submissions by 1 o'clock. And they were like, oh, snap, we haven't done anything. Could someone give this to Gerald really quickly? Gerald, you mind looking into this? Come up with something. This will be your big break, sir. And then you get three floor deletions logos across the hat. Very plain, uh, very Jane like. Because here's the thing I, like, it's hard I, to I, be worse than last year's hat because nobody in their right mind has ever uttered the words Big Easy Football. I own the hat because my wife bought it for me. But nobody's ever uttered the words Big Easy Football, but that was last year's hat. And this year's hat, just, and they want $38 plus shipping for this thing. People are going to buy it though. For who? Not me. People are gonna buy it. Not me. People are gonna people nope. are gonna buy that. They're gonna be people that are gonna buy that. Who is gonna rock that fit? Who? Deuce, if his wife buy it for him. Well, that's only because she buys for me. I got him. Got him. But yo, Russell Wilson, you I you you have this fantasy of of Russell Wilson. So here's the thing, Russell. It, it's just been it's just been uh, announced. Russell is pretty much demanding contract uh, from the Seahawks, 
like an adjustment to his contract or an extension, else or else, pretty much. And Deuce is like, Russell Wilson, Sean Payton. I'm not even. I'm done with Teddy Bridgewater if, if Russell Wilson. Look, fam. Him. I love Teddy. I love the potential of Teddy. I will drop Teddy, like a Teddy, in a hot second for Russell Wilson. I will. Where's the loyalty, man? None. Where's none. the loyalty? Here's the thing. I love Teddy. We were just having a discussion about moral and immoral. Where's the loyalty in that? You know, you don't know what the loyalty is. Come on, spit it. The quarterback who single-handedly runs an entire offense as horribly called as it is. That the team was unable to keep certain players because they knew they would have to pay him. Now, you go get Russell Wilson, you're going to have a hard time keeping a lot of those players that you drafted in. Nah, man, you got a hundred, hundred something million dollars in cap space. You good? Yeah, but he's going to take up a significant chunk of that cap. No, nah, because we're gonna kick him down the road. We're gonna have his cap number in twenty thirty three. All right. Yeah, he's okay. gonna he's gonna sign one of those baseball contracts, thirteen years, for a hundred and fifty million. But he's only actually going to play two and a half of those years. He's going to Super Bowls. Yeah. You think? Russell trying to get paid now. Nah, Russell got leverage. Russell know he got leverage. Russell about to pull an Antonio Brown with a very, very nice face. No blonde beard. No blonde mustache? No blonde, no blonde mustache. No blonde. He's about to do this in the nicest way possible. Bro, you just don't want to see Aaron New Orleans. That's all it is. Dog, that he he's going to do this with a smile on his face. There will be there will be not much talk. There won't be anybody trashing him. It's this is the most nice guy, ruthless. Ruthless nice guy routine you're gonna witness with what Russell does with the Seahawks, and I happen to think they pay him because they've spent so much time jettisoning jettisoning other guys in preparation for this that that team is constructed around his talents. If they were to let him walk, they would have to scrap a lot. I think they're gonna pay him, and I think he knows they're gonna pay him, so he's going to nice guy routine himself all the way. To the bank. Now trade everybody for him. Trade everything. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm upset that you were so willing to walk away from Teddy. Why? Teddy is enshrined. Teddy is to me. Teddy is enshrined. Even just from the folklore aspect of it, from from the signing date, all of that stuff that goes with the injury, spurning the Dolphins, all that good stuff. All that goes with it. I I don't like the fact that you were like, nah, man. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm a take. I'm a, I'm gonna see something real nice in the window. Ooh, it's so shiny. Bro, and I, this I is nicer that. than the window though. Like, this isn't window shopping. This isn't me want Ryan Leaf. We know what Russell Wilson is. This is getting Beyonce in her prime. Yeah, but man, will Beyonce ever really love you? I don't care if she loves me. She makes me money. No man. What? Who? You gotta, the, the, who don't no, want the chip? Man, that's that's not. No man. He's young. You can build you know, around something. You know what? Something wrong with you, Red. I can't quite put my finger on it. Something wrong with you, man. You don't, you don't, you don't, you can't get it right. Don't be mad at me. Because I because I would rather have a top five quarterback right now than the potential of what Teddy could be. Yeah, man, you you just you type of dude that got a great girl at home and a leave for Pamela Anderson Lee in what? her prime. Okay, first of all, Pam ain't my type. Um, she is lacking certain things in the um, Southern Hemisphere. I need more roundness and enjoyability that's why my references are usually more the beyonce type people you can have pam anderson lee that amy give me beyonce or rihanna like right now rihanna not like 15 years ago rihanna not rihanna I'm make sorry, a song I'm, Eminem. I'm riding with teddy you I'm ride with teddy, with teddy to the wheel but uh, you ask the, answer this question honestly who gives the saints more just right now who gives the Saints more of a Super Bowl opportunity, Russell Wilson in black and gold or Teddy Bridgewater? Teddy. 
Man, you lying. Oh, my goodness. Y'all watch that camera. It's about to be lightning come through that window. Did it? Oh, man, that hand came down. I thought that's what that was. I thought lightning came through the window. It was just your hand. That's Ooh. because I believe what I said. Look, Teddy. I love Teddy. Everybody knows I love Teddy. I've got receipts of me supporting no, Teddy, Teddy from the jump. I just like Russell Wilson, too. Mm-mm. That's bad for business, dude. Mm. We think they're going because because here's the thing, even if they don't negotiate, they can still franchise tag the dude. So the odds of him leaving Seattle are super low. Exactly. I mean, if you want if you want to take the logical response to it, I know you're all you all you you you're all bothered by this. Your fluidity kicks in from time to time, and I know this is something that you would enjoy having Russell because you you have such a crush on his talent, right? And what about I get Sierra. It. How come you're not bringing up Sierra? What what about Sierra? Don't you want her in town? You. You clearly not interested in Sierra. Who? Who ain't interested in Sierra? Future interested in Sierra. Future is interested in his ego. Ah. <laughs> oh my god. Speaking of, let's, let's change talking. topics here. Let's change topics here. Um, are do are do you want to go into? Let's let you want to do the sponsors before we we switch into topics. Go ahead and, and do the sponsors, because I, I feel like they deserve some notoriety right now, and everybody needs a break um, before we start. I need a break from Russell up. Wilson and Sierra talk. You personally need a break. Why don't I need a break? from Russell Wilson? Well, Period. The You're quickest still blushing. way. The quick. I'm blushing, bro. That's the fever. Yeah, that's the sickness still staying over. Still, nice recovery. I that's, still that's got really the nice hospital recovery. band sitting on my drawer over there just in case I got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully really not. Recovery, yeah. <laughs> what, what does he do down there? Let's get the whole. Um, but yeah, shout out to JLD Hot Sauce and Knives. My man is out in the big blue sea right now. Having a good old time and supporting his family. You need to support his family, too, by checking out JLDSharpSauce.com. Checking out the hot sauce. Checking out the ghost pepper salt. Checking out the jelly and the knives. We always forget about the knives. I'll be honest. The hot sauce is what's got me. And I watched a video the other day of, you know, people eat the peppers. And they start off like the little Mm -hmm. jalapenos and work their way up. The very last pepper of the competition was a Carolina Reaper. And these people were like passing out. They drinking gallons of milk. They about dying. And that's the stuff this man makes hot sauce out of. It's crazy. Save yourself. Now, not all, let me put it, not all the hot sauce are made of pure Carolina Reaper, but the dead shots are. Try them out if you haven't already. They'll be restocked in May. And also check out our good friends over at nolapools.com. That is Crystal Pools and Spas. If you need to look them up on your Google little handbook or your apples and your series and your Sierras, check them out. Because if you need a pool, now's the time. Wasp are back. Bees are back. Mosquitoes are back. The best way to get away of all them peoples is to jump in a pool and maybe a little water moccasin or an alligator come visit you too. You can have a little swamp pond. Whatever you want to do, they'll help you get it in your yard. Check them out, nolapools.com. Nolapools.com. Saints are ESPN's number one in power rankings following free agency. Is that not the biggest jinx ever? I don't even want to be aligned with anything ESPN, honestly. I don't. That's just me personally. Like I think, I think the 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 Olympics that are pretty much free agency, it's like the worst on paper, I upgraded test that you can possibly do or draw a conclusion from. I think it's 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 terrible. Number one, I think the only thing that you can grade are if a if a team replaces positions. Unfortunately. Uh, these rankings actually occur by teams that are getting the best free agents that are ranked according to them, and then they assign a grade. And clearly I think that's not the way it works. I think it's the worst way possible to do it because there are moves that really look simple on the surface, like the uh, Mario Edwards move, um, that have a much bigger significance or a much bigger, much better – decision by the team to cover certain bases with players that may have been only ranked 80th on that list. Um, 
So it's great that we're number one, but I, I feel like with ESPN, it's for all the wrong reasons. I mean, they're associated with guys who think that we have bad cornerbacks. Um, Saints have, like, the, the worst cornerbacks. Now, hold on. Me. That's Colin Cowherd. That's Fox Sports. I don't care. Be fair. ESPN, Look, Fox I like Sports dumping Sports. on the four-letter sports network as much as the next guy, but I'm going to dump appropriately. That was Fox Sports and Colin Cowherd who said the Saints have the worst corners in the NFC South. Fine, if you want to have that correction, you can have it. Still, still don't like ESPN, and I don't want to be associated with this ranking because I know it's for all the wrong reasons. Would you be associated with ESPN if they paid you 80K in benefits? Now, see, that's a different question. <laughs> no, I wouldn't... <laughs> Here's the thing. I wouldn't sell out either. <laughs> See, I, I think there's a there's like people can be had for money so easily sometimes. And me, I'm I'm more rich in spirit and I'm fine with that. So I don't have to make decisions based off of money. I know people would be like, you would turn money down? Yes. I'd turn money down if the situation wasn't the greatest situation for me. Not everybody's wired like that. So no, I would not sell out. Because of my opinion, because of my feelings about the Four Letter Network, no, I would not sell out and sign a contract mm. if they were paying me that much. So my CD love says that you just want a hundred k. A hundred k? Yeah, that's not a lot of money though. Let's be honest. That, well, it, it depends on where you're at too, because that's truthful. Like, if you're up in Chicago or Seattle, hundred k really ain't that much. If you're living in Monroe, Louisiana, or Tipito or Bro Bridge, a hundred k. Bro, you might as well be a king. Whatever you want, you can have it. I mean, you're, you're a king in, like, current position, but if I'm talking generational wealth, unless I'm, like, using that money to, to like, invest, yeah. I don't care. a lot, a lot of money. You can burn through that and have only things that will last you a couple of months. And I know people that would do it. Value would just <clears> – <throat> and I know people that would do it. Was um, like, hey, it's like Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace. Talking about in his songs, he spent a thousand dollars on T-shirts. Uh, I wouldn't be doing all that, but that's how you blow through a hundred k doing stuff like that. Wait, wait, wait! Did you really decide to take a shot at that man? I ain't like, taking a shot. That's after? pulling out his lyrics because I've been listening to his music today. Yeah, but if here's the thing, here's the thing. If he can afford, I'm not knocking him for to it. To do it, then yes, he can do it because at that point it's a want. But I'm sure if he spent a hundred k on some shirts. Probably because he's been able to spend a hundred k, and he's also taken that money and put elsewhere, especially Look, in his. I got community. great respect for how he did his game because he owns all of his music. Everything is going to go to his family. You ain't got to worry about all that money being distributed and him getting like his people getting five percent of it. I got respect for that. Yeah, I, I thought that, I was, just, that, that was just poor taste. That was, it wasn't a dig though. Was, it was an example. That was absolutely a dig. You just said I wouldn't be doing that. That was a dig. No, it wouldn't because to me, a hundred grand is a lot of money. I have never made a hundred grand like in a year in my life. That's a lot of money to me, so I can't imagine that type of wealth. You you've seen a hundred grand over the over your lifetime. The money that you've made, you've seen hundred grand. It's not that, that's like four years of money for me. A hundred grand, you can spend it if you spend it in your mind in four years. It spins just as quickly. No, what? Four years is not the same as me rolling up in the store and buying t-shirts. That's four yeah, years. But that's, yeah, but you're, you're comparing yourself to someone who has the ability to do that. It's no different than you what having the ability to buy your favorite Kit Kats. And if you wanted to go and buy two, two years worth of Kit Kats, you could do it. Okay, I get what you're saying. I'm simply saying I don't understand because I've not been in those shoes. So I don't have that mindset of that type of wealth. It's it's not even wealth on a grand scale. It's just having the ability to buy what you want. Apparently, man wanted to buy T-shirts. That's cool. As Zach. So it it doesn't take his kind of money to be able to buy what you want. I can go buy if I wanted a, a thousand Batman's right now. I could go buy a thousand Batman's, and you'd say I wouldn't spend that money on a thousand Batman's. But wealth, you don't have to, to expand on the knowledge of, of what it is that wealth. You don't have to have that amount of money. Well, it's except a from a business standpoint, you, you're you able to go and have more frivolous type purchases if you have more money. 
I'm not able to do that. I have to limit my type. Of, so I might go buy a T-shirt, but I'm going to like six dollar T-shirt dot com and getting ten T-shirts for fifty bucks, not dropping thousands you're, of zacks. You're also the person that wouldn't take someone on a nice date. Wow. That's also true. just cause, just cause you're treating yourself. Not yeah, I, I'm not because I don't, so you, I don't you, even treat myself like that. If I treat myself, I'm buying something tangible. Like I go on a vacation or I buy workout equipment. I don't. I'm not gonna go both five hundred dollars on a meal and a movie and event. That's, that's Yo, me. Deuce cheap. Listen, we gotta get it's back true. to the power rankings. Deuce cheap, we do. and we just went. We went there because Deuce is cheap. Speaking of oh. cheap, you know who else is cheap? Mickey Loomis. Mickey ain't cheap. He been cheap. Malcolm Brown Mickey. contract pretty cheap. Latavius Murray contract cheap. Teddy Bridgewater contract. Cheap, the man cheap, and I like it. What if what if he's not cheap? What if the type of players that the Saints bring in are willing to accept the type of money the Saints are offering? What if he's not cheap? What if he's competitive? But what if the types of guys that we're bringing in are guys that aren't necessarily worried about money? Well, my counter would More be so, just a few years ago, before all the changes, he was handing out money. Like, here, have this maximum contract. To everybody. Like, remember Drew's last two contracts were the biggest for quarterbacks. His most recent one wasn't. Jarris Bird, most ever for a safety. Jimmy Graham, most for a tight end. So there was a point where he was handing out money. And now he's been much more parsimonious in his. It's interesting because I, I believe that just from that standpoint, I believe that the only thing that changes is the Saints use analytics a little bit more. I, I feel like they probably have a department that kind of tells them what a player is expected to be, what he is, what he was before based on age, how much they're willing to pay, that they probably didn't use at that time period. And I'm pretty sure that Ireland has had something to do um, with that because they just they seem to be more concise on what they feel is, hey, this is what we're willing to pay. This is what we're expecting from the role we're going to be asking you. So it's kind of like they have these guidelines and they're not willing to move, but it's based on data. And I think when you're playing with data like that, I would prefer, I, I actually like the fact that they're using because I'd rather be the team that lets go of a guy one year too early than the team that lets go of a guy one year too late. Um, and I think when you're willing to make certain moves like that, you may lose in short term, but you win in long term, and it's a long term game. I, like point, that, even I, though you always I have like a that. an eye on today. Um, I agree. And Peyton has talked about using more in analytics and everything. I'm just simply saying I like how things have changed. Regardless of the reason, I think it's more beneficial to the team that there has been an adjustment in that way. No doubt. I mean, I, listen, there's had to be a – in order for this to even be working, this doesn't happen without the 2017 draft class. Um, without without hitting Lattimore, Kamara, uh, Ram, like you aren't able to do what the Saints are doing right now. You just aren't. Um, that class was as integral as the 2006 class, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much set them up to be successful in the long run. Like if you don't hit on these players, you're not able to make a a Marcus Davenport two first round picks because your your window. Is it that big? You wouldn't even be trying to make moves like that unless you felt your window um, for success was somewhere in the range where you can afford to make these moves. And the Saints clearly are, recognize that they have a window. Um, it seems to be culminating this year with Drew Brees, and I think that's why they've uh, the last few years been a little bit more aggressive. Again, it helps that they they had the draft that they had, um, but the aggressiveness that I'm seeing from them is akin to um, the years following 2009 where, you know, you do a little quick change out and then you hit 2011 and you feel like you got the pieces and then they start like, we're going to trade this many draft picks. We're going to do this. That aggressiveness means that the focus that they have right now is they're like Super Bowl or bust. And I think it's probably been that the last two years um, after you get what you get from that, that initial rookie class, I think last year was, was a Super Bowl or bust year. I think this year is a Super Bowl or bust year. Um, and then they'll reset the guns. But well, right now... I'm mad at you. Why? Because you disrespected 2016 draft class. 
Which draft did I say? Which draft class was it? You hype it up 2017, which does need to be hyped up. But man, we always skip over how integral 2016 is to this team, too. What, Rankins and... Thomas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are great. That that's that that's a great class. But it and literally it started in 2015. Like Haloli Kikaha didn't work out, but they had to start rebuilding the locker room and the talent because those three seven and nine teams under any coach but Sean Payton are probably like three and thirteen. Teams. And the reason I bring they up that sixteen bad. too, though, is you've also got your boy David Onyemata. And Von Bell. Right. I mean, they only right. have five picks, and four of those picks are starters on the team. Anyamata starter because Rank is injured, but you know, that's huge. I just gotta that throw them huge. in there. 2017 was massive, obviously, but 2016 needs to make sure they get love. 2015, a <sighs> lot more bust in that one. A lot more bust. I think. I mean, but it's it's bust only from a standpoint of like talent bust. I think yeah. character wise, they still picked players. I mean, Anthony wasn't, you know, the processor that they hoped he would be, but he was the right type of character guy. Holy Kikaha didn't pan out, but right type of character guy. Pete, There's only eh, one injured. player left from 2015. And we had like I mean, eight, nine picks that year. And technically you could you can add PJ Williams in if they bring him back. Um if. and yet that's the first that was the year that they let go of you know, that was when I think they wanted to bring in all the scouts, right? Uh, so they yeah. they kept so many, they fired so many, kept a few of them, then fired the rest after the draft, and they were using old draft scouting information from the pre. Yeah, I could I could see that happening that year, but I think just and that's just from a talent standpoint. But I think from just a rebuilding of the locker room, I think that's when you can see that they started bringing in certain types of guys, um, and so that's why I don't. I don't really – I consider it a failure just from a – I don't even consider it a failure. I just think that that was part of the turning point. It's just that they didn't have the, the data that I think they would have liked um, that they ended up getting the last two years. Uh, even the Marcus Davenport pick last year was a type of player that the Saints have been leaning towards as far as prototype. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that they've implemented a little bit more with Ireland – in office, everyone seems to be on the same page. But he's been integral. I, I don't know what the Saints are going to do in the future about him, if they'll be able to maintain that. But I think Ireland has been a very key piece in this puzzle. I'm interested to see what the Saints end up doing with his contract in the future. You want to hear a fun fact? Go. Since 2005, the Saints have drafted three players – who have amassed 32 sacks or more in their careers so far. Only one of them did it with the Saints. Oh, so they've been, they've been drafting these players but can't keep them. Yeah, Akeem Hicks and Rob Nikovich are the other two, and then Cameron Jordan. Yeah. yeah. Akeem was – man, that was a that's – a, that's a messed up situation. Yeah, it was. Like, it's so – I can, I can kind of understand why he's so upset. Because the king was was like that's a homegrown talent. You would have got that man from Canada, um, and for whatever reason, he never panned out as like a three tech. I think they always saw him as more of a one. And the year that Dennis Allen came in, they tried to play him on the outside um, as more of a left defensive end with Cam at the right defensive end spot. And they just he didn't. I mean, he didn't fit there, so they traded him. But yo, that dude was prime like. Like Hicks was kind of slow coming on at the time, but that was a that was a that was kind of weird the way that played out. That was mm-hmm. really really weird. Well, we need to talk about Hello Kikaha real quick. Although I will say one thing, one thing I'm looking forward to this year is Cam Jordan. If he stays on his current pace of around double digits, he will pass Wayne Martin uh, on the Saints mm-hmm. record books because Wayne has got 82 point. Five sacks and Cam Jordan has seventy one and a half, I think. So something to watch out for. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, talk about Hello Kikaha, who is trying to resurrect his NFL career. Yeah, after sitting out last year, Holy is is looking to uh, sign with a team. He said he heard from a couple of teams last year, didn't end up signing. But uh, and uh, you know, most athletes when they're working out, 
they will tell you, they will say all the right things like, hey, I feel good. And one of the comments he made was, <laughs> I'm moving better than I did my rookie year, so I feel good about myself. And that's, I kind of expect it. Do I believe it? Eh, probably not so much. But I expect him to say that because you got to remember he's selling himself. What's he going to do? Uh, lie? Like, oh, man, my knee still hurts, but I'm ready. <laughs> right, right. Like, so, I mean, here's the thing. The Saints missed out on uh, the Robert Quinn package. So right now they're left with, you know, a guy like Ezekiel Ansah who, you know, he's got a shoulder injury that as of right now no team really wants to touch him. So, and then you've got the other side of he's just not that good of a player all the time. Like he's got the potential to be a good player, but then that's that's like off and on with him. So and it's like a eh, toss up. So then you've got Haoli Kikaha inserting himself back into the league in some way. Would he be an option for the Saints to play that that third down role? And because they're familiar with him, how interested do you think they'd be? Should there be interest there? Mm, no. Are you just going to end it no? Yeah, you're not gonna elaborate. You're not, you know. Have we not talked what? about this enough? Okay. All right. Fine. So well, here, let's make here's a why. Let's... We could use this to segue into our next segment to talk about people who I do think that you should look at. Well, which is I'm fine with that because if you if you're going to 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 trash that man for for his first initial celebration as a saint, um, the surfboard thing. If you're gonna trash the man, I don't think you want to just sit there and keep piling on him. You say we've had the discussion already. So let's find let's, let's move on to the discussion. So what about a guy like J. Ron Elliott? Saints so are again familiar with the player. Uh, he went on in the a, with the, the a, 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 AAF, a, 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 AAF, the, the NAFTA. Um, <laughs> uh, this man said the NAFTA. <laughs> he went on to lead that league of sex, which now looks to be defunct. Yeah, what's well, defunct? Or, or approaching yeah. defunct. Yeah, Dundon, uh, uh, Dunder Mifflin over there decided to do him dirty. Pretty horrible. But um, it is what it is. That was a brilliant decision. I'm just saying. I'm not it's, saying it's, it's not brilliant, but it's still horrible. horrible ethically ethically and mor- morally messed up. But, man, that was a brilliant move. But J. Ron Elliott, option, would you look at him? Could he fill the role? Say so familiar? Yeah or nay? Personally, personally, just me. I would rather go for Carter Schultz out of the Stallions because from a size standpoint, he fits more with his hand in the dirt, whereas J. Rohn's only like 245 pounds. He's more of like a stand-up edge rusher in a two-point stance. I don't say the Saints can't use him, but they both uh, – J. Rohn had seven and a half sacks. Carter had seven in eight games. Just from a, you know – fit to fit thing, I'd probably rather go Carter, but I would like both of them to get brought in. Like if you could give them a call right now and say, Hey, you're con cause all the AF contracts are being cut tomorrow, which means every single one of them becomes part of the NFL free agency. So they are now able to sign with an NFL team. I would love to see them give a couple of these guys a call and uh, see if they can give them some quick raises. Likelihood that the Saints bring in Elliot between five, one and five stars. Be a raising. Two. Mm. I would I would venture to guess that they try to pick off some of the offensive talent. You think? Yeah, because they can get some of these wide receivers pretty cheap. Like a Charles Johnson, who's with the Apollos, arguably the best team in the AAF. He had 687 yards, 45 receptions, and five TDs in eight games. And his primary area of operation was short to intermediate routes. Fits perfect in a potential West Coast. And he's 30, so he's not going to be very expensive. It'll be a very cheap signing to come in and play for a roster spot. You don't like it? I don't like it. I don't like it. What about I like, uh, I like Rashard that Ross out of Arizona? Big deep threat guy. Think young Ted Ginn. Give me the age. Oh, I don't know how old he is. I'm not so big on it. It's just that, man, if I'm going to bring in somebody like that, he's got to have some some amount of growth potential. 
because he's got to come in. He's number one, got to learn a playbook at 30 years of age. How much can I use you during your first training camp? How much can you pick up on? And then what am I going to be doing with you in a year? Like I, I need a little bit more from that, from the role that I'm looking to Rashad fill. Rashad is 27. And he does have some NFL experience, not a lot, but some. I just feel like on defense, it's, at particular positions, it's easier to kind of transition guys like that right now. And that's where I'd be looking for some of my talent at. Offense, I'll, I'll yeah, give you depending one more on size. Thing. I'll give you one more. And I like this one because I felt like he got hurt because of the team he was on, my team, the Memphis Express, Reese Horn. He's 6'3", 215, 25 years old, averaged over 15 yards of reception, nice length, decent body, but he was playing with guys like Christian Hackenberg and Johnny Manziel as quarterback. I'm with that. That's the right you know type of size, speed, size, weight combination. The, the youth is there. You got something to work with. He's probably there for a year or two. Can hit the practice squad. He's good. Um, I'm fine with that. I just, man, uh, I think, I think one of the the issues with offense is has been pretty much youth, especially at the skill position players. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather be looking at developmental defensive talent than developmental offensive talent. Unless a guy can step in like now or missed out a year, I'd be like, yeah, I'm looking at more defensive spots for that. That's just me personally. And I will say that one area that's really tough for me to judge is the offensive line and defensive line, particularly offensive line because they had such unique rules in the AAF. So, like, offensive line, I didn't have to worry about as many different blitz packages. They didn't have to defend against as much. Um, And they also had such limited time to work together that really offensive line play did not start – getting decent in the AF until probably two months in. I mean, really the past few games, it started to start moving in a good direction, like as a whole and as units. So it's tough for me to really start picking out offensive linemen. Now, if they had devoted some scouting to that, like teams did, they had a couple of people watching the AF, they might be able to give some names, but like, I can't go say Toby Weathersby from Memphis deserves, uh, you know, a shot at the NFL based off anything that he did the past three months. So at that point, does your attention turn back to Ezekiel answer? Is that the next guy up? You got the money. You still got ten million in cap What's space. That? You only need about three and a half million of that to sign draft picks. So that gives you plenty of room to play with in terms of a cap number this year. So let's say you've got you say you need three, so that means you're willing to spend about seven mil on a on a, six and on a, a half. pass rusher. Six about and six and a half. But that's just his cap is, number, though, because you could pay him twelve million, and his cap only be six million. And spread the first it year. over, yeah, and spread it because of the length of the contract and his bonus money, so he gets spread. I got you. Um, but is Ezekiel answer worth that, or is he a one year deal kind of guy? With maybe, a, I guess you could do that, like kind of. I guess what they did with Fairley's contract initially, which was it was a one year, I think, with avoidable. Mm-hmm. year on it so they can spread, but I guess they had intentions of bringing him back, too. Um, does all of your attention go to answer? Oh, and um, here's your thing. P.J. Williams just re-signed. Move. Your son is back. I knew he was going to be back. I already knew he was going to be back. Yeah. Like I said. I was surprised he wasn't last, brought back already. So, Well, he so he wasn't a high priority, and sometimes that's just the way it is. Um, and yet, I expected him to return because, man, listen, if you watch the defense last year, you can't tell me you didn't consistently see P.J. Williams around the ball. Mm. As long as he can get in the screen, especially on things like tackles or just get somewhere near the ball, P.J. Williams was there. And those are the kind of guys when you're constructing a defense, that's about effort. That's also got a little mix of I know where to go. I know how to get there. It's got some instincts mixed in. Those are the types of guys you bring back. Now, because of everything he's had happen to him, he didn't do, put himself in a great position to get paid. And so the Saints have the ability to kind of do that because he wasn't a priority. But if you're going to bring someone back, especially Patrick Robinson being the age he is, PJ can kind of play like a bigger corner, so he's more safety in how he plays the slot role. While Patrick Robinson is more, uh, he's more cornerback. But as a fourth, 
cornerback in the defense, I would take PJ Williams all day over another team's fourth receiver. I just would. That's the you 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 bring him back. I just would. Well, there you have it. PJ Williams is back. We got some super chats we gotta get into too. I'm cool with that. You pipe dream. Up. Pipe dream. All right, guys. How what, likely is it? What you can I say? get my pipe dream? Your pipe dream. My pipe dream. Which time? How likely is it that the, that the Buccaneers walk away from Jerry McCoy? I, and could the same sound it more likely by some of the things Bruce? It's like Bruce Arians dropping hints. It's like you the. It's like when you're the best friend to a couple that's been together like a while, and you can just feel like they acting different. They acting different down in Tampa right now. Something's up. Oh, they really are. He pretty much said to the man, he's like, "Oh, we could use him. I mean, he's he could he could play a lot of snaps for us, but he, he's not as he's still disruptive, but he's not what he was years ago." How, now, if if the if the Bucks are actually waiting for someone to trade for him, how does that sound? Does that sound like you're maximizing your the trade value of a player anytime you come out and say those things like that? Man, first of all, I'm just, as a player, I'd be pretty salty. If somebody try to say that about me. Second of all, why would you even say such a thing? That's just it's yo. Rude. This is one of those cases like where I like Arians, but his flamboyant style or his his willingness to say things there's a there's a good side to it. I think this is one of those times where you wish Bruce would shut up. He's not necessarily like lying though. Like he's not necessarily he's not lying. lying. But if the objective was to get value for him. Yeah, and you don't. It's it's like yo. I'm gonna sell you this. I'm gonna sell you this car now. It's 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 kind of rusty. Uh, it still runs good. Uh, a couple of bolts are coming out here and there, and the transmission fluid is coming out of the the oil bin right now. But it's okay. It we could use it. We could still get some snaps out of it. Play a lot of snaps for me. But yo, that's terrible. You're not gonna get any value. So if your worst fear is because. Obviously, you'd want to trade him because if I'm if I'm Jerry McCoy and the Bucks cut me, the first place I'm going is New Orleans. The first place I'm going, especially if I want to win a Super Bowl, is I'm going to New Orleans. And if the Bucks know this, the Saints are sitting on this money, and the Bucks know this, I would be trying to trade him right now. I would be hoping someone trade. So my head coach just said something so ludicrous. That if any team wants him, it probably makes sense just for watch us cut it. And I don't think any team is going to trade for a mildly disruptive player with a high contract unless the Bucks are willing to pay some of that money, and I doubt they really are. So now if I'm any team, it's just like, I don't know, I just wait. I don't know, man. But if I'm, if I'm Gerald, I'm going straight. I'm coming straight to New Orleans. Bro, Bruce. Just so I can smash you twice. Bruce straight up said, Bruce got asked, does your girlfriend look fat in this dress? And he said, yes. Yes. <laughs> Without hesitation, he said, yup. Resounding. That that muffin top is showing. <laughs> the Yo. sell you heavy is there. That man, I don't know why he did that, but yeah, I, I agree with you. And I'm, I've been on the Gerald McCoy thing for months. I would love the Saints to get him. I'm, I'm, that's my pipe dream. Mm. Right. On that one. Go ahead. We got some. Uh, we we do we have some people who support the show. And we appreciate it because um, I've been out for the past couple of weeks, not past couple of weeks, but past week, and uh, very appreciative of everybody. Big shout out to all the Patreon supporters and PayPal and uh, YouTube, Twitch, everything. Because um, I'll tell you one thing: you learn as an adult, medical bills is expensive, and in one weekend, I have racked up over two grand in bills. Because uh, apparently tests are expensive. So I appreciate all y'all continue to support the show. It means the world to me. And uh, right at this point, you're literally keeping me alive. So big shout out. Charles says, who that? Have you reserved your in-game tickets yet? Um, my town, I literally only have to wait to the next day after the shoot. And then the empty, the theater is basically empty. Because unless it's like a Dukes of Hazard movie, there's not a lot going on in Monroe. I can usually get to Avengers and it'd be a relatively empty theater and not have to worry about it. So, no, I'm not wasting my time going to a midnight premiere and fighting with all them people. I'll just go the next day. Yeah, I haven't reserved my tickets and I probably won't because I'm not a 
big crowd person. Even though I've 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 seen where people have had a lot of fun. I've been a part of maybe one or two movies where everybody is there and the crowd is wanting to see it. But I'm also from the South. We don't get the same type of movie theater experiences you'd be seeing like on you know, like that you see like on Instagram where the whole crowd is into it and they're having like these little moments where they're like, Yeah, sir. No man. Nobody does we that. We got sticky floors and weird yeah, smells like, it doesn't. It doesn't quite go like that. It just ends up being some grumpy people, some rude people, all piled into a one collection, and yeah, I'm good. Like I would much rather just wait, um, and check mine out like a couple of days later, a couple of maybe like a week later. And I, listen, I I want to see this movie. It's just it's it's not like it's it's what's a video game that I I used to get every year like Fallout. Like when a new Fallout comes out, and I would go and and wait uh, at Electronic Boutique until about you know one in the morning or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I just, no, no. Mm. Yeah, and, and the last Fallout was trash. I haven't played since Fallout Three. Mm. Fallout Four. Fallout Three. I, I think it was Las Vegas. Uh, Vegas was good. Fallout 4 was good, especially if you were on the modding community. The story was not great, but the game itself was good. Uh, the Fallout 76 was utter boo-boo garbage. So, mm. How did you do? Yeah. Cashmere says, CBS got us drafting Andy Isabella. What do we think? I am... There are names I would rather have besides Andy Isabella. You know, Terry McLaren, Paris Campbell, Debo Samuel. A lot of the same names I've been rattling off for months. But I wouldn't be mad at it either. I think Andy would fit a lot of what the Saints do. I would rather have a guy with a little bit more size and a little bit more wingspan than Andy Isabella. Give me his, his measurables. I'm about to pull it up for you, but they ain't big. Uh... Is he under six foot? Yes. Does he run a 4-3? Yes. But he's like five nine and something and 185 pounds. But he runs a four three. But he's little. He's like Brandon Cooks. <laughs> he's like Brandon I'm just, Cooks. I'm not a fan of giving Drew smaller receivers as he ages. Me either. I, I think that's I think that's the worst thing you can do. Like Br- Brady is the type of quarterback that uh, Brandon Cooks fit actually a little bit better because Brady could still lead him. And he's got the size to see over the offensive line. So with Drew, I feel like because of the way Drew admittedly gets balls out, he throws the spots, sometimes not the receiver. He needs the receivers there. I like bigger, longer receivers that can uh, provide a much bigger target that Drew can still throw open. They just will have to be able to make a contested catch. And I think it's no coincidence the year that we drafted Michael Thomas, uh, what was his name? Henry Morton, the wide receivers coach at that time, said that the Saints were really putting an emphasis on guys that could catch in traffic. Mm-hmm. They wanted guys with strong hands that could catch the ball with guys draped over them. They weren't looking for explosive receivers. They weren't looking for speed. They were looking for guys who could make contested catches. And I think as Drew ages, Drew has admittedly said that he's more likely to throw a 50-50 ball Depending on if he trusts the receiver, it's more like a 75-25 ball. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at receivers that have wingspan um, and have body and can catch. Give me a, a 6'5 guy that can play in the slot over a 5'11, 5'10 guy that has 4'3 speed. Official measurements for Andy Isabella from the NFL Combine, 5'9", 188 pounds. Here's a big one I don't like. You can be short, and but you, you need to have good length if you got it. He's only got 29 and three-quarter inch arms and small baby eight and three-eighths hands. He, oh, Andy, yeah, no. Andy Isabella is basically a regular dude you would meet at the game, size-wise. He no. just happens to run a 4-3-1. Four, he, three. he does catch well. He's very athletic, very explosive, but he doesn't have the size that I'm looking for. For the Saints. I don't like it. I don't like the pick. Nope, don't like it. All right. Then fair enough. Next one from Andrew says, um, Alas, uh, wow. Uh, well, okay. Um, we'll see how you feel. He says, I look good. Says, look like I've lost weight and that you picked up some of the weight that I lost. I'm not sure how we should feel about that. Um, I have gotten bigger, man. I've got to, I've got to drop my, got to get back on my diet. I've gotten bigger. Well, it, um, my supper consisted of oatmeal and yogurt, and I promise if you eat that, you're going to lose weight. 
<laughs> oh, you dropped real quick. <laughs> so <laughs> you I, I'm, I'm, old man. I'm trying. Because um, one thing I, I've officially been diagnosed with, which I already knew I had, but it was official thanks to this weekend, is anxiety disorder. So anxiety disorder messes with you, your heart and makes you have symptoms like you're having a heart attack and stuff. So trying to get all that down and just feel better about myself, be a healthier me. So, yeah, I appreciate that, Andrew, even though you, you threw that way to the last. Would we be willing to trade Michael Thomas and Kamara for Russell Wilson? Ooh, I already know your answer, so. Well, if you know my answer, you go ahead and answer. Tell everybody your answer because I think everybody knows my answer. Oh. So what's your answer? From a logistics standpoint, you're going to say, yeah. I mean, because there's no, nothing no, no. more valuable I, than quarterback. Here's what I'm going to say. If it was two years from now, and MT and Kamara had top contracts for their position, I would say yes, because I'd rather trade away two skill positions with max contracts and get a quarterback with a max contract that's top five. But with MT and Kamara both riding these rookie deals, no, I'd rather stick with them now and not trade that away because it's too cheap. To, you, you need that money space. You could afford to take on a big quarterback if you were getting rid of two massive contracts. But I wouldn't do it yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. No. I love Russell Wilson, though. But, like, if I'm paying Michael Thomas $20 million a year and Kamara $14 million a year, which would be, let's just math in our head, $34 million a year, yeah, I'd trade that for Russell Wilson. But am I going to trade where they're making, like, a combined $3 million? No, I'm not trading that. No. No, sir. We've already established that Deuce has no loyalty. So, you, yes, Deuce would trade. I am loyal to the black and gold, not to the individual players on the black and gold. I said four years ago I'd trade Drew Brees in a heartbeat if it guaranteed me a Super Bowl. Ain't nobody safe if I think it gets me a Lombardi. Nobody. Fair enough. I mean, what, what are we Any playing this game? Are we playing this game for friends? Is this just a game pickup ball outside? Or are we trying to do something? I mean, I said fair enough. Because you give me this look, but you're the same one that's <laughs> proud of Captain Dunder Mifflin screwing the AAF and getting thousands of people to lose their jobs just so he can get some technology. And then you will come at me like, oh, he ain't loyal. He ain't loyal. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I had to bring that up since you won't call me now, Lord. You talk to me. Talk what to Deuce me. doesn't know is that anxiety is only <laughs> his his admittance, his, his nine admittance that he has two personalities. What? One of those personalities is trying to get out. Oh, what? Yeah. That's a good move. Get out. One of those personalities is like, I need to be out. And now it's 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 pretty much itching for you've got that Kanye. You got that Kanyeism. Man, now you call me superpower. Yeezy. That's your superpower. My superpower is that I'm That's Kanye. your superpower. Well, the superpowers that you have. Y'all hear it here exactly. first, guys. The next episode of Who Had Confessional, there's going to be a choir in the background. I'm going to be on keys, and it's going to be lit. <laughs> Every time Kanye <laughs> make a comeback, it involves lady. a choir and keys. Hey, man. I don't know. Leave hey, Kanye alone, man. You brought Kanye into this, man. Kanye going to be on some obscure podcast talking about <laughs> Ebony and Ivory talking trash. You ain't got all the answers. <laughs> 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 all right, we got to move on. Not enough no. people going to catch all these jokes. Josh, thanks for supporting the show. He says, and this is an April Fool's joke, but what do you think of the Saints possibly signing Johnny Manziel? Um, big no. I was a big no when he signed with Memphis, and I'm a big no about him possibly signing with the Saints. Big no. Yeah, I'm, I'm just tired of seeing that dude get so many chances. I know people that get fewer chances. I'm tired of seeing him. I'm tired of him being in the news. I'm tired of Johnny Manziel. I don't want to say his name anymore after this. Next question. <laughs> we have to put a code name up for Johnny. New Orleans banger legend. How's the draft guy coming, and how do you become a sponsor of the channel like JLD and Nola Pools? Well, man, I'm glad you asked. The draft guy, because of my son's sickness, he was sick about a month and a half, and then me literally being in the hospital, 
I have canceled the guide because I'm simply not like it was supposed to be out now, but it's not finished. And I simply by the time I finished it now, after everything that's going on, we'd basically be at the draft. So what I'm going to do is I'm any information I do get, I'm going to or compile, I'm going to put it in articles out on Twitter and give it to my sponsors and give it to my supporters and everything. As far as becoming a sponsor, please hit us up on Twitter. Shoot me an email, discord, whatever, and I will give you the details on all that, man. And I appreciate your interest. Very good question. We've had some some gentlemen asking about that draft guide, so uh, glad you've gotten that squared away. And I can also share the word. Yeah, that. I mean, I hate to do that. Like, I really want to do the guide, but I'll tell you this, man. If y'all have ever done anything like this on your own, it's basically like writing a book and you give yourself like a four-month deadline. And it is really difficult to do because it takes hundreds of hours. And any small thing that happens, you know, sickness, family, it, it just kills the schedule, man. So I'll tell you this. If I ever decide to write a book, I'm going to give myself like two years to do it. There you go. Lesson learned. What if this is simply a lesson learned for a much bigger project that you have later on in life? Hey. Voila. I love the positivity in that. Hey, that's the kind of things that I try to give people, man. All positivity, all positive vibes. <sighs> do we have do we have any more any more questions? Or are we going to that, actually have a walk? That was the last okay. super chat that I see here. And we can have a walk with the last because the people need it. I need it. Let, let's have it. Story time. Uh here's the thing. Don't downgrade yourself because you can't control your urges. Um, ended up going, ended up having a friend that wanted to go and, and grab some food. Uh, and she specified that she really wanted crabs because uh, where she's from, they can't get seafood. So she really, really wanted these crabs. So we get to the place, we, we talk to these guys at the store, they direct us to the proper location. Um, we get to the place and find out that it's an hour and a half wait. She completely hits tantrum status. I'm not waiting an hour and a half for crabs. We can go somewhere else. So we get to this other restaurant, and uh, I think it was wings. She wanted, like, wings. So we get to that restaurant, and they're, like, 45-minute wait. She's like, I'm not waiting 45 minutes. I just get a little burger. I'm like, yo, do you realize that you, you literally were willing to downgrade on two separate occasions? just because you lack patience to control your urge for hunger. Now, you really, really, really wanted these crabs. Mm -hmm. And because you can't wait for an hour and a half, because you lack patience, you're going to downgrade and risk having a burger, which you're not going to enjoy as much. Uh, anyway, I ended up convincing her to, uh, to wait for the full hour and 30 minutes. We get the crabs. And the smile never leaves her face the entire time. She's like, I'm glad I waited. Listen, people, control your urges. Don't downgrade yourself just because you can't wait. Have a little patience. It can go a long, long way. But don't downgrade yourself. It's a good discussion about instant gratification. Indeed. I, I think we're in a culture, especially with me being a millennial, that's like a thing. We want instant gratification on everything. Yeah, I'm glad I don't think like many millennials. Mm, me too. Um, we got a couple more that came in right before we wrapping up. So here, Travis, thanks for supporting the show. And Donna wants to know how we met. Well, man, it was a nice moonlit night. We took a stroll. Um, we, we were both eating crawfish-flavored wings. and uh, It was raviolis. Right. How did we? Like I remember where it was on the Saints report, but I don't remember necessarily like the day or the moment or the. You got Short the story. story. I wrote an article one night. Decided I was it was supposed to be just a post, but I was going to write it in an article format. The next morning, I get up and I have a message from Deuce Windham asking me if I want to write for the Canal Street Chronicles. I ended up accepting. I started writing. He wanted me to be on the show. We discussed it for like two weeks. Bam, we hit the show up, and everything was magical from that point on. 
That is it in a nutshell. Deuce Wyndham came and got me out of the depths. I won't even say depths. He he came to the clouds of Saint Saints Report and was like, "Hey man, I want to work with you." In a nutshell, and uh, I'm forever grateful. And for yeah, for me having the ability to to have something for him to see and then for him to actually be able to see it. Uh, so that's one of those those matches made way before we got here. That was a contract agreed on. Fifty there said that you were one of the best heels on Saints Report. You have really mellowed out on Saints Report a lot, man. You don't get negative rep like at all anymore. I don't post anymore. We had that discussion. Like I don't. It's also true. I don't. I don't post as much anymore, and I, I've I've grown. I've grown a lot because I don't feel the need to. I think back then that was like. I don't know if I believe that I knew what I knew, and so you always want people to agree with things so you can feel like, hey, that was accurate. And so precisely, I needed to be validated. And since then, I no longer have that need. Um. And so that's 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 been a big improvement for me. Like I didn't try to be a heel. It's just that that's kind of technically how I was perceived, and so I went with it. Like I'm I'm a pretty respectful person. Uh, I try to engage people properly, but I I do have a tendency to lash, and people don't like when you when you lash, even if it's provoked. People always remember the last thing done, and because I am the type that lash because. I'm a calculated lasher. I sting. I say something that's very accurate. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've appreciated Deuce significantly, but Saints Report has continues to have my love. I still sign in. I still check in, say hello from time to time. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't feel the need to argue with people anymore. That was that was one point where I was in my life at that time. I think we all people mature grow. a little bit because that validation that. That's one of the reasons I started blogging in the first place was for that validation. I don't do it anymore. Oh, wow. I do it now because I enjoy it. But when it started, it was kind of like you were saying, like I wanted, I thought I knew everything I knew I was talking about. And now I realize I knew a lot less than I thought I knew. But I mean, I wanted people to see my opinion and validate me because I started on um, not Saints Report, but the NOLA forums, like the Times Pick You uh-huh. website. And it wasn't really a forum, but they had a comment section. Like they had just almost like a scrolling chat 24-7. I don't even know if they still have it. And uh, then you had all the comments on the articles. That's where I was several years ago, and I don't even go there anymore. But And then Twig had just dropped a super chat asking how we met and how we came up with the podcast. Well, the podcast is actually something that I had done off and on two years prior to Elias. So there were like three or four different co-hosts before Elias. So let's say we had Brian B. Enemy. We had Adam Williamson. We had John Hendricks did a few of them with me. And Barry Hurstis was the first one. Really going way far back. But I never did it consistently. Like I'd do it maybe during the season and then drop off. So since I've been doing with Elias two straight years, really. Like we've we don't we haven't really taken a break. None of it. I mean been yeah, pretty consistent. Yeah, so mm-hmm. yeah, that, that that's the story. And Brian, uh, Brian B. is the only one out of all those still doing any type of radio or broadcasting now. And, and Brian is a hoot. Brian is, you talk about a heel. Brian is the ultimate heel. People either love that Brian dude or hate heel. that dude. And He's he, had, the ultimate he has no heel. problem being the heel. No, he enjoys like, every second of it. Yeah, he enjoys the heel. I, I have a problem because I get the heel tag and I don't really feel like I'm being heal at all. You're like that I'd chaotic be, neutral dude. You're chaotic neutral. Yeah, I, I want to be I want to be known for being logical, and yet I tend to look as though I never really want to understand a person's point. And so, yeah, but B? No, nah, B is like... But I'll say this. Watch out on B. Don't be trying to call that dude out, because he will come to your house. <laughs> no, like... He I, will I go back to jail. Real, like, at a he will point, go back you to jail. Stop. With Brian, because at, at, <laughs> at, there's always a transition in the conversation where he's dead serious. Yeah, it's like and you, the you all joking. Still trolling. Uh-huh. He's he'll troll, he'll troll, he'll troll, and then he gets to a point where he's dead serious, and the person is still trolling. He's like, nah, pull up. Yeah, 
And he will drop his address right there, wherever he's at. He will drop it. (laughs) Like, like I'm on the corner, MLK in third. Where you at? (laughs) If he say pull up, you, you, you really cross the threshold. It's time to start retracting your comments. Listen, people retract all the time. People go in their shelves all the time. There's no shame in it. Retract. Yeah. Unless you're really about that. Now, if you're really about that, you. But I find that the internet is very much a place for people to say what they would never say in person yeah, because a lot of the stuff people will say, they would get plushed in the mouth. So the internet is, has given those people a voice, which is great because those people probably have other things to say that should be heard as well. But it also means that they've got to learn to kind of nip stuff in the bud and not go over. But uh, yeah, B, like you get to a certain point with B, and it's like, all right, man, yeah, you look too far. You might want to. You yeah. don't want them problems. Like, cause I like B, and I understand why people don't like B. That's cool. I don't care. B's already done, always done me well. So, but I, I say too, B's not a guy I'm gonna cross. In the rare instance that I make him mad and and <laughs> he tries to pull up at my house, <laughs> that man gonna drive by my house out of a Ford Taurus. I don't leave me alone, B. <laughs> now why you? Because he ain't gonna use the company van. He drives now, so. <laughs> I man, I I I ain't right. gonna pull up in I ain't gonna pull up in a Range Rover. <laughs> and let you know about yourself. Keep playing with your man. All right. Hey, I got something for you, B. Come on. I got my license. See, man, there you go with that stand your ground. <laughs> see, 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 see. You ain't G. You ain't G at all. You ain't G. Uh, look, bro, I'm not, I'm not a millennial. I'm, uh, I play to win. That's however. That's all that matters. <laughs> Did I win? Yeah, I mean, what, what? <laughs> we go for the Lombardi. You, That's all we care about is the Lombardi. Did I get the Lombardi? It don't matter how I got it. What year were you born in, Ryan? You like a eighty? You like a ninety, baby? Eighty nine? Yeah. Oh, so you still made it in the eighties, all right? Yeah. You get you by get two respect. months. You, you still made it. By nine. two months. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Okay. Thursday night we'll be back. Um, Saturday night I hope to do a show if Elias is around because we didn't get to do this one this past Saturday. Obviously, if he's around, we'll try again. You gonna be able to do it after dark? I sh- I should be I, I should be home because I leave uh I leave Seattle Thursday. Um Yeah, then you should be home by Saturday unless you I should be home. leaving by U Haul trip. I mean for Thursday's episode I'll be home. Saturday, man, like I there's a potential for me to be like in Houston somewhere on Saturday. I gotta Oh, she's gonna be with me. I wanna be with my daughter. Oh, well B's got a route in Houston, so I'm gonna be with my daughter. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, but yeah, man, we'll we'll see if we can get it kicked off. Hopefully, everybody is is a one hundred then because you know how it goes down after dark. There's, there's usually a bottle, and it ain't the kind that got clear water in it. Um, so yeah, we get that. We'll, we'll see about that get that that tipped off on. We'll see about Robert okay. says. Would you deflate a football just to win, brother? I would deflate every football. Did all right? Did y'all not hear me earlier in this episode when I said something wrong with Red? <laughs> Look, man, me relieving that ball of two PSI, I, they ain't worried about it. It's not illegal till it's illegal. And then it's illegal. Look, that's just the truth of it. They've made rules now where the Saints Super Bowl would never have happened because of the rules they have now. That's just the nature of the game. Tom Brady got 18 rings. He done done it all. And he the GOAT. So. You done digging? No, I'm not digging nothing. I'm just, if y'all ain't willing to win as much as me, that's cool. I ain't mad at you. I ain't judging you. Y'all asked me if I wanted to win. Yeah, I want trophies. At all costs. I mean, I'm not going to, like, you know, sacrifice a goat or, you know, kill somebody. The man asked me if I'd deflate a football, not if I would sacrifice to Beelzebub. 
it takes to to make the decision to cheat takes the same morality it would take to do all of those things. You realize? No, that, I'm right? a big proponent of moral to, uh, moral relativity. I, I don't think that sacrificing the bls above and sacrificing animals and babies and stuff is the same as the play to football. I don't think they're the same. So, no, no, no. I you see people get caught comparing the two things. It's not the comparison of the two things. It's the simple action to either do wrong or do right. So if you can do wrong in any case, you can do wrong in any case. So it, it's nothing to flick a switch. It's just depending oh, on who well, you want to flick that switch. We, so what well, I'm saying is it takes the same level of, of I'm fine with it to do all of that. Well, sure, but that's the same for everybody because humans have the same amount of potential evil in them as they have the same potential good. That's just human. Precisely. That's just humanity. It's just how it is, fam. Precisely. So again, not comparing the two things. It's just that to to make the decision, you either you either have it in you or you don't. And but everybody has it in. Rev. Some people just Rev. Back. But, yeah, but, but Rev, Rev, Rev out here like I do it. I cheat. You. you That's pretty bold just to be like I over cheat. a deflated football of like half a psi. Yes. It's just, are you? How much would you do to win? I'd win. All right. That's all. The, that's that's the answer. I'd win. All right. If I was like, he don't want to play no games with Deuce. Be flipping up. No, nah, fam. Look, just because I got a sharpie when we playing dominoes don't mean nothing. I'm not using that sharpie for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> But, <laughs> but ain't that five and three already been played? No, <laughs> ain't nobody played no five and three already. Experience, experience. put my fifteen yeah. down. Lee, Ooh. how you got seven Ooh. spades in your hand? <laughs> that, I ain't saying yeah. I've never, I've never won a card game throwing down six aces. It's never happened. <laughs> I got three <laughs> pair. I got three pair. <laughs> Man, I'm a G. If y'all still out there, I'm gonna let y'all decide on that. Bro, y'all ain't I'm never just... you ain't never had a full hand of aces, full house. <laughs> signing out. This is a lie, signing out. All right, we will see y'all Thursday night. We love y'all. Who that? God bless. Peace. Mm-hmm.